I'm Zoe Li. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at McMaster University. I'm very glad to be here today um, to show you some of uh, the work that we did with the support from OWC. And this is uh, for the um, knowledge mobilization program um, organized by OWC. Hopefully, um, you will be able to know what we did um, through some of the OWC project with uh, in collaboration with our industrial partner. So the work that I'm presenting today is an application of machine learning in wastewater modeling. More specifically, this is where we use machine learning for the prediction of membrane following for membrane uh, bioreactors. So I have uh, prepared uh, three parts for the day. First of all, I will give you an introduction to machine learning, um, focusing on its application in waste water modeling. And then we'll talk about the project we worked on. And I'll also um, discuss some of the other potential applications of machine learning for waste water modeling. So waste water modeling. Um, for those who are familiar with the wastewater treatment, you probably know that this is a very typical wastewater treatment process where you have influent, you have alf uh, affluent, and here you have some unit uh, processes to um, remove pollutant from the wastewater. So traditionally, we would use um, mechanistic models. This is where we collect the data for the influent and for all the operational data for each individual unit. Um, and then based on the governing equations, um, such as biological, physical, or chemical models, we can um, build a physically, ba a physically based model to estimate the affluent concentration. So that's mechanistic, uh, the traditional mechanistic model. Um, with machine learning, um, we can actually simplify that process. We do not need to uh, develop any governing equation based on the actual biological, physical, or chemical reactions. Instead, we just need to collect uh, some input data with all the monitoring influent data, and then uh, collect some corresponding affluent data. And then we can use machine learning techniques to build the input output relationship. And then um, after using um, a certain amount of data to train the input output relationship, we can then get a machine learning model uh, for output prediction. Um, so that's the big difference between um, mecha mechanistic model or often called process driven model um, versus um, the machine learning model or often called a data driven model. So with that in mind, um, we can think about the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, um, machine learning. The advantages is very uh, obvious. Um, in this case, we do not need to have a full understanding of the physics or the reactions um, that's um, taking place in the system. Um, we can easily identify trends and patterns because we have a lot of uh, uh, data to analyze. Um, and um, when it's well trained, the machine learning models can be quite accurate. Um, and uh, because it's that, uh, machine learning doesn't rely on uh, the physics, we can actually utilize data from all different kinds of sources. Um, it supports continuous improvement. Um, but the disadvantages are also quite obvious. Um, oftentimes to develop machine learning model, we will need uh, a large amount of uh, training data. Um, and if there are errors in the data, then um, the um, machine learning model you build are unlikely to be very uh, accurate or reliable. Um, and also there's a, a wide range of uh, algorithms that uh, you can choose. There's not a single model that would uh, for sure work very well for your case. So there's, this is usually a try and error uh, process where you might want to try different uh, machine learning algorithms to find the most reliable model for your case. Um, and 
sometimes it could require additional uh, computer power. Um, depends. This this mostly depends on the size of your uh, data sets. So now moving on to our specific project. So this project was founded by Suits and NSERC. Um, and Suits is now called uh, Veolia. Uh, um, and the focus or the uh, objective is to predict uh, um, TMP, transmembrane pressure, and permeability um, during three different uh, cycles. Um, so TMP and the permeability, they are considered as very, very important indicators of, of member fouling. That's why they are our target variables. Um, and here I have a flow chart. So you can see the general, <coughs> excuse me. So you can see the general process for wastewater treatment uh, with the bioreactor. So we have the submerged uh, membrane bioreactor, which looks like this. So what we did is we collected the data uh, around the uh, membrane so that we can try to build a model to predict uh, two indicators of membrane fouling. Um, so we got a lot of data. Uh, from uh, our industrial partner. Um, this is uh, monitoring data with a temporal resolution of 22 minutes. And there's lots and lots of observation points. There are many different input variables, but we selected only seven from 21 um, available variables. This is mainly to reduce the computational requirement. And we tested three algorithms, three very classic algorithms. Um, and then after developing separate uh, machine learning models for TMP and permeability, we were able to test their uh, accuracy. Um, we, you can see from the figure that over here, the x-axis are our observed uh, TMP value and the y-axis over here are our predicted uh, PMT value. So you can see that uh, the accuracy is actually quite high. Um, based on that, for research purposes and for uncertainty analysis purposes, we also developed the probabilistic uh, um, prediction tools so that our prediction can be more robust. All of the work has been uh, published in a um, journal. This is a top journal in uh, membrane and um, water treatment based on membrane. So if you're interested in um, more details about this work, you can always go to uh, this paper. We have everything described very clearly in that paper. And finally, I would like to talk about some other potential applications of machine learning for wastewater modeling. So uh, one of the takeaway from the presentation, I hope, is that you can realize that there is a lot of potential applications for machine learning. I presented only one um, example, but it can actually be used for many other applications. For example, sometimes we got site data and lab data from waste water or water treatment plants. Machine learning can help us fill in the missing values in our da uh, lab data or uh, even site data. Um, we can use machine learning to do performance assessment because, of course, you can predict the affluent quality. When you can predict affluent quality, you can use that for performance assessment. Also, it can be used for anomaly detection and the diagnosis. So you have like real-time observation data, and then you uh, pair that with your machine learning algorithm. So the model can read the real-time data and then detect uh, anomaly um, in real time. So this can be very useful for us to identify unexpected changes happening during the wastewater or water treatment process. Uh, we can also use it for process optimization and many other things. Um, I have to say that this is an area that we are still um, exploring, but uh, we can see a very good uh, potential. So that's everything I have. I hope um, I've uh, uh, presented a story about how machine learning can be used uh, um, for 
waste water modeling. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, reach out and let me know. Thank you.